Hello, my name is Matthew Marquette and welcome to this video where I'm going to cover how to uh, set up a scene and import your assets into a Unity project. So we're going to cover the entire process of getting it out of a 3D package such as 3D Studio Max or Maya and then setting it up with your textures using a PBR workflow or a physically based rendering workflow. Okay. So first things first, of course, we need to know what do we have to do to the geometry uh, and have things done before we even bring it into Unity. Uh, obviously, this is completed as far as the modeling goes, the texture or the unwrapping and the texturing. So all that stuff is done. And you can also keep in mind, you know, you can import things individually and build them as kind of like Lego blocks as a scene, or you can import them all as one object, uh, which I'll show you. But the cool thing about Unity is even if you import them as objects and they are separate objects, like you can see here, you see all the decals that I'm using on the, on the ground and the walls and things like that. Um, you can then uh, go in and actually manually move parts of them or even delete parts of them uh, if you want and if you don't want to use it uh, as it came in. Okay, so we'll show that, of course, when we get into Unity. But like I said, a couple things you want to make sure. Make sure your geometry is clean, like weld your vertices, do that kind of stuff, but also delete the history. So if you're in Maya, you, it's, it actually is called deleting history, but in Max, it's called resetting your X form. So you can either select a object or all objects. It's actually easier, of course, if you just select all the objects at once by hit Control A there. And you click on the uh, little wrench over here, which is your utilities bar. Click on reset X form and reset selected. What should happen if you go back to your modify panel, is that every object should have a X form on it okay a modifier so I'm just gonna select them all right click and convert to editable poly so now I've reset the X form and everything now keep in mind that the the X form is just like the history in Maya deletes like a lot of the previous stuff that happened to it kind of remembers a lot of stuff in the background but sometimes it actually does mess it up just a little bit in unity if you see that happen what you're gonna want to do like to say you know your normals are inverted sometimes that happens so like on this object I even brought it in the normals went inverted if that's the case you just select the object again before and then re-export it, but what you do is you come into your modifier list and just put a normal modifier on it and it will just flip the normals uh, collapse that down and it should be fine if that's the problem there might be other issues um, that might be linked to other things but just keep in mind that uh, that could be one of the potential issues so look into that um, before you research uh, what might be a, a another potential issue now the other thing is of course you want to make sure all your materials are named and I've actually done that if I open up my material editor by hitting M here you see in max I've named all these materials so like this one's just called pillar or ground you know really simple things trim um, you know dirt decal all the decals have you know like uh, graffiti decal so on right so I name them and that's important if you name your materials of course if you're in max just so you don't know or if you do know uh, actually just double click on the material and up here is how you name it right you'll just type something in there so just give it a name so when it's brought into uh, Unity, the materials will be called the same thing in Unity. Otherwise, you'll have these various materials that'll be like material 51, material 34, whatever, and you won't know exactly what they are. Okay, the last thing you want to do is, of course, set the pivot points. So, uh, this thing as a whole, I'm not actually have to, too worried about it when I'm bringing it as one piece, but if you're going to bring them in as individual pieces, like I said, to kind of build them more modularly. Um, you like say this object here you'll actually see that the pivot point is kind of floating out in the middle of nowhere based on how I uh, how I modeled it so uh, if you bring it into unity as a separate object that's where you're going to be able to move it and rotate it from and if that, that's not what you want of course you need to change that so if you can if you're in max you just click on the hierarchy tab over here effect pivot only you can move it manually or just like click on something like center to object and then put it in the center and then you'll be good right so it's up to you how you want to do that but just get that done so once all of that is done you are ready to go and ready to import into Unity. So I'm actually going to hit Control A again to select everything, and I'm going to go up to the top here, uh, the little Max button. Click on the arrow next to Export and go Export Selected. So this is uh, exporting everything at once, right? Instead of individually, I'm going to go find my folder that I have it in here, this Wall Demo, and you can see right here I already have a file, but this is the same file I'm going to write over called Wall.fbx. So we're just using the default FBX file format. So we're going to hit Save. It's going to ask me if I want to write over this. Of course, you won't have this if you're making a new file. And uh, and here you can you can ignore most of this stuff. But the thing like under geometry, just make sure that you click on smoothing groups over here, so you import the smoothing groups with your geometry. There's nothing crazy with my smoothing groups on this, as most things are just pure angular 
uh, kind of content just to keep things simple. Um, but it's up to you. Uh, and then we'll just hit OK. And that's it. So you've saved out your FBX. Now we're totally ready to go into Unity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on and launch Unity. You see right here, if you have no projects, it goes directly to just the Learn section. You can watch the stuff if you want. But over here is our Project section. I have no projects built right now. You can either click on New Project here or New Up here. So we'll click on New Up here. I can call it whatever. I mean, this is the Unity Import video. So we'll just call it Unity Import. So we'll just type that in there. You can choose the location to get saved. Um, you also see that you can do a 3D or 2D scene. Uh, only a couple differences between them, but we're going to obviously do a 3D, so we're going to leave that. Uh, you can import packages this way, but I'm going to show you how to do some of the packages once we actually get in and just leave the enable Unity Analytics off. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit Create Project, and what it's going to do is it's going to build any content that I had if I actually added any of the packages that would do that. But it loads up pretty quick over here on the side because we actually don't have anything in the scene. So it's just an empty folder, empty scene. Okay, so now that we've launched that, just keep in mind that my interface, in case you're wondering why it might look a little bit different, if I actually go to Window and go to Layouts, you'll see I'm actually using Tall. So if you want the same kind of viewport uh, with a big um, uh, thing on the side here, of course, if I'm using the full screen instead of having my notes on the side, it looks a little bit better, but we're just going to have it over here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Now, I usually just delete the main camera because I'm going to bring in a character controller. And if you don't delete the main camera from the scene, the character controller bugs out a little bit uh, when you make a build. So I'm just going to delete the main camera so we don't have to worry about that. So literally the only thing in our scene right now is a directional light. Okay. So the next thing we need to do in order to actually have something to work with is we need to we need to put some sort of floor or terrain, like something that the player can run on, some sort of physics object or collision object. So I'm not going to show terrain, but you go to game object, 3D object, and you can do terrain. I have that in a whole new video. Um, but I'm just going to come over here and choose plane. And we're just going to scale this plane up really big because right now by default it's kind of tiny. So we'll just scale it way up so there's some space. Okay. So there you go. All right. So now that, uh, now that plane is there. Good. So we have something for our player to run on. And now I'm actually going to import the character package. So if you go to assets at the top, come over here to import package and these are the default ones that come with unity I'm going to choose characters because they have a nice first person character controller now I'm just going to import everything because I'm lazy but you can come in here and actually just choose what you want but we'll just hit import and just bring all this stuff in um, but you can like I said refine it so it doesn't import every little thing because you can play around with some of the other things they have a third person character controller and whatever he's a little wonky so I tend not to use them but first person is better when you're showing off your art anyways Okay, so I'm going to push this out a little bit so we can see a little bit better here. So it brought in the standard assets folder. I'm going to expand out on this. Go to characters, expand that out. First person character and then prefabs. And then this right here, your FPS controller. That is your character controller. So we'll come in, drop them into the scene. I'm going to go grab the move tool here and lift them above the ground. Because if you just set them that way, he actually falls through the universe. So we're just going to, you know, just keeps falling forever. So let's just lift them so he's above the terrain and cool. So now if we import our assets, we can run around and take a look at them. Okay, so pretty simple. There you go. So that's our object in there. So we're ready to go. Uh, one major thing, though, you want to do, of course, uh, before you're moving on, this is something that I like to do is by going to game view. So this is the view that the camera's actually seeing. Okay, so this is the scene view we're working in, but this is the scene that the camera's seeing. Uh, right here under game view, just click on maximize on play. Now I already have it on, but make sure it's on maximize on play. So when you hit play, and I'm going to hit play here, you'll see what happens. It maximizes the window to be the entire viewport. So now I can kind of look around. I can jump. I can walk. I'm not going to do too much of that because it's a little loud. And I can just hit escape and get out of it. And the reason why we want it to make the full screen is because either A, it just looks better, right? You can see more. Um, but B, if you're actually working in play mode, um, it actually is just a temp mode. So basically meaning any work I do in the play mode, if I wasn't paying attention, I came over here and started fiddling around with stuff, would be completely... Uh, thrown out the window uh, once I got out of play mode. So I've had students do that before. Uh, it's not fun to realize you just spent an hour working and you lost all your work. So that's why I do that because now you're not tempted to do it because the whole screen, including the settings and all the stuff on the side, disappear. Okay, so just that's part of the reason why I do that. All right, so let's set up the scene so that it's ready to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that it's ready to go for your um, PBR uh, kind of workflow. All right, so these are some things I actually learned by watching the uh, the algorithmic video so if you're you know you want to they actually cover a little couple more things more in depth but we'll just cover some of them and they kind of start over here uh, with the uh, with the project settings okay so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna do that we're gonna go up to edit okay we're gonna do project settings in this case we're gonna choose player 
Okay, so this opens up this kind of scene on the side here, which gives us some different things. Uh, what they uh, asked to do so that, you know, of course, their textures and the stuff that you do say in there, like if you use Painter or Bitmap to Material, which is kind of how I created the content, which is why I want to uh, use this workflow in here. Um, but you'll see that, you know, the one thing they're asking to do is change the color space here. So color space by default is set to gamma. Just change it to linear. Okay, and then next thing you want to do is actually click on the uh, camera in the scene. So the camera in the scene actually is now in the FPS controller. So we need to expand that. Click on this, which is the camera, and this will pop up. And now we want to allow HDR. Okay, so we'll click on that setting. Now, what we also want to do is add a new skybox. Now, there really isn't any skyboxes that come default anymore with Unity. However, if you go to the asset store, so I'm just going to click on this. Here's a link that I have. This was actually a cool skybox that I found for free. You see it loaded up here. All right, so you can you can use that skybox or anything else. Um, I can like click on here because I've already got it and I'm already logged into my account. Uh, so you obviously you have to make an account and then you can download it. But I can click on Open in Unity, right? It's going to open up the editor. So what it do, what it does is it opens up the asset store in your uh, Unity uh, scene here. Okay, and so now we can kind of minimize this so it's not getting in the way. And I can click on Import. So I've already downloaded it. So now I'm just hitting Import so that that skybox comes in and hit Import. Because the default skybox is kind of lame, to be honest with you. Um, so that's what we're doing is we're just kind of bringing in a uh, kind of a more interesting skybox. So you see it dumped in my skybox uh, right here. Okay, so now we want to change the skybox. So I'm going to go back over here to scene view so we can kind of see what's going on. All right, I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit here too because we're going to want to change the lighting in a moment once we change that. All right. So uh, from there, so now that we've we've brought in a skybox, you can bring in any skybox, or if you have one you've made, or you can download one, purchase one. It really doesn't matter. But like I was saying, you go to the asset store, get one, um, just so that you know it matches whatever scene you're going for. Uh, but then we're going to go up to the top here. We're going to window. We're going to choose lighting down here, and we're going to go to settings. And this is where you change the skybox. You see right here it says default skybox, which is the skybox material. We're going to click on this little circle, and if I have it imported like I do. Here's our skybox uh, scene here. I'm just going to click on this, and you see the entire scene changes now. Okay, so this is a little bit more interesting. It's got clouds. It's got some other stuff. Uh, to be fair, though, the lighting does not match. So that's the next thing you want to do is you want to fix the lighting in the scene. Okay, so right now we have a directional light, so I'll just double click so we can see the directional light. And you can tell that's not facing the right way. In order to kind of test that it's working, we need to put something else in the scene so we can see our shadow. So we see where the sun or the, the main light is coming from, and then we need to drop an object in. So I'm going to go to game object, 3D object, and we'll just do a cube. Oops, I did a sphere, but I guess it really doesn't matter. I was going to do a cube, but hey, this works too. All right, so we got our cube in there, and now what we can do, and like you said, here's, uh, like I said before, right here's the sun. You can see that little dot there. It's kind of going out of view, but all we have to do is kind of rotate this directional light to uh, match whatever we're seeing over there. So I can just kind of spin it like this, kind of lift it up. It's going to be fairly flat, and so we can kind of come over here and see, does it look right? It's a little bit off. I need to rotate it just a little bit more, something to that effect, so it looks like it's coming from that direction. There you go. So it kind of looks like the shadows coming from that direction is pretty low. That works well. And then if you want, uh, this is actually pretty bright. So if you want to drop the intensity because this particular skybox is getting a little dimmer, maybe I'll do something like a 0.8 or something like that. So just a little bit dimmer in intensity. And then the color by default matched this yellow. Uh, but if you want, you can also match. Like if you click on this right here, you can pick a color in the skybox and use it. So if I say like this color here, we can click that. And now it has that tint, kind of that reddish tint. Um, if you don't want it that saturated, you can always click on the color once it's spawned, kind of right in here using that clicker, and just get a little bit closer to white. So we're not as saturated, but we're just getting a little bit of a tint, right? Maybe even closer to white there, because so we don't want it too saturated, as it will change how all the textures are looking. All right, so there we go. We'll shut that off. All right, so that gives you kind of a quick understanding of how you would uh, work all that stuff. And if you're going to have like, you know, mirrored stuff, like if you have. Um, I shouldn't say mirrored stuff, but if you're going to have reflective stuff in the scene, you can also add in a reflection probe. You, know, you don't have to do this, but of course, if you want your reflections uh, from your uh, metallic and uh, your roughness workflow, uh, you're going to add, a, um, like I said, a reflection probe. And so in order to do that, that's actually fairly easy. You just go to um, right up here, game object. You choose light and you come down here and add your reflection probe. And then you'll make the probe big enough so that it kind of encircles your scene. Right and uh, and so on, but uh, pretty pretty simple concept in, in that matter. Uh, but that's how you would you would go about in doing that. Um, and then um, you can also go to um, in the over here in the um, 
the settings of the reflection, uh, reflection probe, you can kind of change it to match what is happening uh, in the scene. You want to change it from type to be real time. So we'll go in here and set that to real time so that it's constantly rendering the uh, reflections in real time. And then you want to change the resolution from 128 to 512. So if you're going to use that in your scene, that's how you would do that. Now you can scale the heck out of it too, right? So we can scale this thing up. And by the way, if you just hit scale, it doesn't work. You actually have to come in here and click on the probe here. And now you can make the box bigger to make sure that it encapsulates, you know, encapsulates whatever your scene is. And the center of it will be basically the mirror point. So we can lift it above the ground. And actually you can see right here because I've actually moved the objects independent. That's the probe. That's the center of it. So we want to kind of make sure that that's more centered in the whole box, right? So we can kind of come in there. And it, what it does, like I said, is just basically going to, um, whoops, I'm grabbing the top. Let me grab the side here. Pull that out. Yeah, it's basically going to set your reflections for you. So whatever you actually see in your scene will be what's being reflected. You can even see it right now in the probe. It's reflecting this skybox, which is pretty cool. So you get a much more realistic look. Okay, so that's how the, the probes work, but we'll, we'll just get out of that. Okay, so there you go. So I'll just make sure when I import my assets that they kind of pop in there. So now what we need to do is, yes, import the assets. And I'm going to scroll down, and we're getting towards the bottom as far as the content I'm showing, but there's a little bit more that goes into it um, than that. And so actually what we're going to do is I'm going to create a, a new folder here. And there's a couple ways of doing this. I'm going to expand this out a little bit here. Um, you can right-click inside like... Um, uh, like on this object here and you can create and then go like folder and you'll see that I've now created a folder this in this case it's in the standard assets and I actually don't want that so I can hit delete and delete it but I can click on assets itself right click create and do a folder and you can call it whatever you want like work files imported assets I'm gonna call it work files here right so this is basically just so that we're organized right so I'm gonna save my work files here uh, we will come down into inside that folder and actually just you know you want to make sure that you're constantly saving your scene so you don't lose your work if unity crashes or whatever so obviously at any given point you can come up here and go save the scene so we'll save the scene and I can save it in my work files and I can just call this also unity import and now everything that's in my um, up here in my hierarchy is going to be saved and there it is there's my unity import scene Saved. So obviously when we start bringing our content in, we'll continue to save it over and over again as it is updated. But there you go. Now inside this folder, we can we can right click and add new, uh, new folders, in this case geometry and textures. But you can also do it this way. If you right click on a folder here uh, within the project folder, you can go show and explore and actually open it up in Explorer, go straight into work files. And now just like what you would do if you're making folders in Windows, I can come in here and do one called geometry and then right click and do another one called textures and the great thing is it's just a mirror of what you're seeing here so i can shut that off come over here and you see boom geometry and texture so you can do it either way it's up to you but like i said this is just for um uh purposes of of uh, showing you guys how this works um anyways the way the folders are here now we need to bring in our actual content so i have my content here there's two ways of doing it you could directly drag it in or like you just saw i can open up and show an explorer and then copy it in the explorer mode so over here in geometry you can do that but actually what we want to do is do textures first okay so you do textures first otherwise all the materials don't get assigned properly so i'm just going to come in and grab all of the textures that i want and i'm going to deselect what i don't want so these are the stuff i don't want this i don't want over here whoops let's de deselect the max files uh deselect that and this and this okay so pretty much everything else whoops there we go Okay, so <laughs> I made copies of everything. Anyways, but what we can do over here is we can drag in and put all our textures in here. So now that our textures are in the scene, awesome. And um, like I said, I even had copies in there by mistake, being a little silly, but whatever. We can always clean that stuff up later. And then now in the geometry folder, I can dump in the wall FBX. And now, and I actually moved it, so I can copy that uh, back out of here. Whoops, and then paste it in. So we'll copy and paste it back in here. So make sure, yeah, you're not moving it over there, but you can copy it. So now if I come over here and you'll see it actually loading all of these things. So uh, boom, there it is. So you should see geometry with our wall and uh, our textures over here. And actually, I think uh, this might have, yeah. So it looks like the materials just got messed up again. Um, but I can even show you. So um, I should have just switched back over to Unity, made sure that the geometry loaded in, and then did it again with textures uh, so it loads up. But we can show how you could just apply them again anyways over here in the materials that it automatically makes. 
Okay, so as I told you before, name your materials because over here, this is what they're going to be called. So now you'll see how I called those things like concrete, uh, crack detail, you know, dirt uh, or decal and dirt decal and so on. That's how that works. And so what we can do in order to start adding these in here, and these know that they're transparent textures, they're already set. So at least that's uh, that's the case. But let's just say let's bring our Ghostbuster decal back in. We click on the little button next to Albedo and we'll find our Ghostbusters one. Here it is. Boom. So I click on that and there you go. It loads in. Okay, so let's start doing that for all of our different textures and get them to kind of pop into our scene. So we'll add the different materials. So we'll just start with the albedo. Some of them have more. So, you know, right here is the concrete. So what do I want for the concrete? Click on this and I'll find my concrete texture, right, which is this one and so on. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, when you do this, you don't have to redo them. But, of course, I can use this as an excuse to show you how it works. Here's the brick texture. So we'll click on that and bring in the brick texture. We got our electrical box. So I can click on that and electrical box and so on. So I can just kind of come in here and just finish this off. So uh, as you can see, it's not that hard of a process. Uh, but obviously, if you were to do it in the right order, uh, unlike what I did, then you don't have to do all this extra steps. And, and if you have like 20 different textures, uh, that would uh, clearly take a really long time uh, to put them all back. So where's my leaves? Here's my leaves. And uh, stone paver texture. So we'll come in here and we'll do the stone pavers. And I think I need to still do my dirt. So dirt decal. Click on. And here's our dirt. And crack decal. And click on crack. And there you go. All right, so I think now I've got most of them in. There's one I'm missing here, uh, which is this uh, this one on the bottom here, uh, which is the cement border. So let's do that again and click on that and choose, uh, where's my cement border? This one, bam. All right, cool. So now all the textures are in. But you can kind of see that there's some issues going on with my, um, my transparencies. So you always want to be mindful of what texture is happening. Now, this scene is a little bit dark, like I said, because it is matching the lighting. So always be mindful of that. Of course, we can always add our own lights to the scene. We go to game object, light, and we can come in here and do something like a point light. Drop that in the scene, bring it in, kind of lighten it up a little bit. Okay, of course, it looked like it was in front, but it wasn't. It's still behind it, so let's do that. Lift it up. There we go. Now we can see the scene a little bit better. And let's put that in there. I'm going to hit uh, F to center it, so then I can just zoom in on there. And there we go. So we can see it a little bit brighter. It's getting really small, so we're going to smush this over here so we can see just a bit better of what we're looking at here. Um, so some of the textures come in, but you can see how some of these have like a shine to them. All right, so be mindful of when you're actually doing, so let's just say I'll click on the leaves one right here. So we'll click on the leaves decal. Uh, always be mindful of stuff, in this case, smoothness. Um, you want to set the smoothness down to pretty much uh, zero unless it has that. But now you can see with that, we're not getting that weird shine on it anymore. And so you would want to, of course, do that for all of your different uh, types of um, uh, decals. Right, so the Ghostbuster decal, we're going to drop the smoothness down. Uh, we're going to drop down the smoothness on all the other decals. So we have a great decal. And you can tell I just have a ton of decals going on here. So we're just going to do that, and we're going to fix that for all of them. Um, there you go. So that fixes a little bit. But you also have to make sure uh, also that... Um, uh, that your uh, your texture is chosen right in this case instead of being transparent So this means it kind of has like a semi fade if we want if we just click on fade or cut out in this case We're gonna I mean uh, cut out if I click on cut out that should fix it completely so that you're not getting any issues at all um, Because uh, that will kind of hide this you know the rest of the poly that's making it So yeah, you between those two things you should be able to fix it I come over here and I change this from transparent to a cutout same thing. There you go looks much better uh, and so on. So once again, so yeah, it's a little extra work if you do what I did here, but that's just, you're going to have to sometimes fix your stuff. Okay. So there you go. Whatever you get the idea. I don't necessarily have to do that for all of them, uh, but it works. Okay. So it looks good enough. Uh, let me move the light just a little bit over to the side there. All right. So now, of course, if you want, and you say have you have a more complex texture, right? A texture that is more involved than just obviously the diffuse and this shiny kind of look. Let's do that with the paver floor. So you can even see that if you click. And I remember saying that, you know, uh, in the beginning where you can import the object as a whole. Well, this is cool because you can import it as a whole, but now I can go down the sub objects. And this is actually the name. So you can see I didn't name a lot of the things. Uh, when I brought it in, but if you name them, they'll also be named appropriately here. But if I say I want to move the ground, I can actually move the ground, right? Or any of these decals uh, or whatever um, on my um, uh, on my uh, group here. So that's kind of the cool thing is even if you bring it as a whole, you can kind of move them around independent. All right. So, uh, like I said, I have the ground select, and the reason why I have that select is you can then see, because in case you didn't know what the name of the material was, you can see right here it's called the stone pavers material. So this I actually have a bunch of advanced textures for. 
Okay, so I can go over to my textures folder and we can see them all over here and anything called bitmap uh, to material because I exported those specifically for this, we can now actually start applying to these nodes. So things like, you know, ambient occlusion, we can drag ambient occlusion in here and that's now been added. I can grab my normal map and snap it over here into normal. And keep in mind that normal maps by default don't come in and they don't know that it's normal so if you see you'll drag in here and it goes oh this texture looks like it's a normal map do you want to fix it you hit yes you fix it now and then bam now you can see it's actually working properly okay um and we can continue to play around with all the other settings too and drop in the other one so there's our metallic right here so i can drag that into metallic okay um and uh and so on and there's a height map so i can grab the height map and draw that in there too so that's how you would create your more uh, advanced materials you can kind of see right here it looks a little bit better and i'll actually deselect off of it because it's making it a little yellow but there you go you can kind of see how cool that is now right a lot more dimension isn't super um crazy but you can still play with the shader so if i actually come over here to the material and uh that material is the stone pavers material here you can move some sliders around increase or decrease the height right so we can play around with the height of this and change how that looks right we can play around with the occlusion and drop the shadows in between if we don't like that uh, the smoothness we can play around with right so it has none at all or just a little bit or whatever anything in between so you have to be really careful with this so it doesn't go too crazy that actually looks pretty good right there not too shiny uh, or whatever but that's kind of the great thing and then the other thing too is if you notice that maybe it's not uh, in this case it came in with a default gray um, typically, if you don't want any color manipulation at all with your textures, you want to make sure that this color right here is actually set to white, right? And then you'll get that pure color, right? And so this is what happened to a lot of these, I'm assuming. If I click on this, you'll see these materials have been have a gray on them instead of a white. So if I come in and set them to white, they'll be brighter, okay? But if you want, you can actually dim them or add a tint to them. Uh, so it does take the texture that's already there and then tints it on top of the fact, okay? So you kind of see here. Uh, how that works um, and uh, there you go so that's pretty much it as far as like getting your content in how do you set up your textures things like that and then maybe kind of adding lights of course now I can hit play and my character falls on the ground and uh, wow that's tiny we could probably scale it up right uh, but there you go you can see that I can kind of walk around and take a look at my content so that way you can kind of see how it looks in unity so let's escape out of that one last thing I did want to say is you can use uh, vertex snapping so this is actually a modular piece that's meant to snap together multiple times so i can duplicate this right i hit Control d to duplicate i can kind of move it and using the v uh, hotkey which is the snap i can click on snap and snap it there and bam you can kind of see how that now perfectly snaps together and i can make as many of these as i want and i can even mirror them and then have them on the other side snap them together and make a whole hallway out of them that's kind of the modular thing works yeah definitely definitely utilize that v key uh, for snapping but there you go. So that's pretty much everything I want to talk about. It was quite uh, quite a bit of content, uh, but hopefully this helped you. Uh, also make sure that your probe, as you remember I showed before my reflection probe, we can do that, put that in the center. So anything that's using the reflection uh, would actually look more appropriate. But uh, yeah, there you go. So hopefully this video uh, taught you guys a few things about importing content into Unity, and I will see you guys in the next one.